Now to make the mushroom lamp post. The top of the mushroom is made similarly to the top of the acorn house. It has four sections, the first section being square sections, and then two different sizes of trapezoids. These of course will be a little bit smaller because the mushroom is smaller. This first one is one inch tall and the base is three quarters of an inch and the top is a half an inch. And the second trapezoid is three quarters of an inch tall, the base is a half and the top is a quarter. And then the top a circle for the mushroom is an inch and a quarter in diameter and I think I forgot to say that down here on the straight sides I've got a piece of 12 inch chipboard that is 5 eighths of an inch tall and I have just scored it with my craft knife at 3 quarter inch intervals. I'm sorry I didn't actually use my craft knife I used a small trimmer to make sure that I got all the cuts uh, straight. So um, and then that those are the pieces for the cap and then for the stem itself I have cut a piece that is four and a quarter by five inches tall and then I have scored again um, using my trimmer uh, every quarter of an inch so we get kind of a corrugated thing so we'll be able to form a tube for the stem. So like I said putting together the cap is the is similar to how we did the acorn um, roof and so I will proceed to do that. Now I have all four of my layers for the mushroom cap completed. I have added a section of uh, cardstock with score tape here. I think you can see and I've cut some notches in that. And then for layer two I've added some little tabs to the top of each section just with some uh, cardstock with score tape. Level three does not need any kind of tabs because I added a little a sm like larger ring to the circle at the top. You wouldn't need to cut these little wedges. I just did them so that you could hopefully more easily see. You just need to cut little slits. And so then it's a matter of uh, assembling and I'll take off all of the score tape and then assemble. So first we'll join the bottom ring and I'm just going to kind of fold on each one of these creases. When I made the cardstock tabs, I, I carried that piece, I think you can see, made it one inch wide so it would carry all the way to the bottom of this strip. And then we'll just make a butt join there and burnish that. And then just kind of fold these tabs to the inside so they're out of the way. I did score that one inch piece of cardstock joining strip at 5 8 inches so it would be easy to bend these tabs down. And then the second ring We'll join that into a circle here. Again, just butt those last two pieces together and burnish. And because these bottom row pieces were cut at 3 quarter inch and the bottom of these trapezoids is 3 quarter inch, you should be able to just put sections together. I like to kind of go around and do maybe every fourth one or so of the 16 sections. Then you can come back and get the rest. And then reach in and 
I'm going to turn this and burnish it. Okay. Have a few more little score tape backings here. And I just cut those little pieces a half, know, I'm sorry, three-eighths inch wide there. And now we'll join this third section into a round and again burnish that. These should meet up and we'll use that same procedure. Do one and then kind of skip ahead. Then you can go back and get the remainder. And then our little inch and a quarter inch circle. Just kind of fold these tabs back. Just quickly double check my measurement here. That should be good. Pop that circle right in the middle there. We'll give that a final burnish and then that'll be the top of our mushroom cap. Then to give the stem a place to rest on, I've cut one medium weight chipboard circle that's an inch and a half in diameter. And then to help the cap stay centered on the stem, I've cut four circles that are an inch and a quarter. Maybe just a little shy of an inch and a quarter. You certainly don't want to go over because otherwise it won't fit inside of the stem. And then so I've glued those four into a little block here and just did a little sanding on the edges. So I'm going to glue those onto the center of my one and a half inch uh, piece and then center that whole unit down here in the middle of the mushroom cap. So I have a few more pieces and parts laid out here because I'm going to turn this mushroom into a lamp post. Now, the first thing I've got here is a ring that the outside diameter is three and three quarters or just a little shy of three and three quarters. I had to trim just a little bit off of it so it would fit inside of the mushroom cap. And then the inside uh, circle, the diameter is three and, um, I'm sorry, two and three quarters, so that we have uh, a half inch ring here. Now, if you are not making the lamp post, you can just glue this ring in right even with the edge of the mushroom cap. But if you are going to make the lamp post, you'll want to take it up to the edge of the flat thing so it won't interfere with the, the lamp. So that's what I'm going to do. Then we can just set that aside to dry. Now for the stem, which is uh, six inches, I'll correct it in the video where I had it before. I decided it needed to be a little taller. I made my scores at quarter inch so that it can wrap around very easily. And if you are just, uh, if you're not making the lamp post, you can um, 
uh, I'll sh when we go to join it, those are the only steps you'll need. But because I'm making the lamp post, I need to punch a couple of holes. And I've set my, uh, I've got my big bite here set for an inch and a half down. If you don't have a big bite, you can just make a one eighth inch hole that is one and one half inches down from the top. Now I'm going to come in about um, to the, I'm going to skip three sections and put the first hole in the center of the fourth section in from one of the edges. And just try to get that centered. And then I'm going to measure over two and one eighth inches from the center of that hole. And that will be the center center line for my other hole. Now I think what I'll do just to give this a little extra support in the back here is I've just got a little scrap of uh, cardstock joining strip and I'm one, two, three, four, five. I'm in the sixth one here. And I'll just put that behind here. Just give it a little extra support. And then again I've got this at an inch and a half and I'll just try to get that centered on that line I just made. Okay. Now at the top here from the one that we put in the center I'm going to cut a slit it's about not quite an eighth of an inch wide and about a half an inch long and that's for the cord to come out for the light I'm using one of the little Tim Holtz lanterns here so I'm just cutting cutting a little slit there for the cord to come through. Now we're ready to join this into the round. Now if you weren't having the lamp you would just skip the punching of holes and the making of the slit. I've got a piece of uh, cardstock joining strip here that we can use. just butt these two edges up and then reach in there and give that a burnish as well. Okay, so now we have uh, one more little inch and one quarter circle and that's going to go down here at the bottom. get some glue just put a bead of glue on the inside of the bottom here I usually have a little piece of patty paper to work on but I don't have any so I'll just use a little scrap of chipboard here and drop that circle down in there and then use something to get it all the way down and just a little bit more on this side And we'll let that set up and then we'll be back for the next step. Next I have a piece of 
Tyvek here that is 14 and a half inches long by about three quarters of an inch wide. And the purpose of this is to make a sling so that you can get at the battery pack to bring it up. Now, there may be another way to do this. This is just a uh, way I thought I would try. So I've just made, made a loop here. And then I've put a piece of score tape on the bottom of my battery pack. And I'm just going to attach that there. So then... When the battery pack is down inside of the stem, I'll be able to reach in here and pull it up. Now, in order to hold the lamp, we punch these two holes. I have a piece of dowel, actually it's a kitchen skewer, that's 1 8 inch wide and it's 3 and a half inches long. Now I've left the pointed end on here uh, just so that uh, it would be easy to go through the holes. So the way this is going to go together is, of course you would have your batteries in the battery pack. Then this slips down inside and you can feed extra cord down inside too. The skewer goes through the two old holes that we punched. And then I'll just keep feeding the extra cord down inside of the stem here. And then the loop for the lantern, well the cord will come through the slot that we made and the metal loop for the lantern will go over the skewer. We'll tuck that down far enough and then we'll put the cap on. Might have to wiggle it around a little bit to get it to fit on that quarter, that plug we made at the top, but once we get some decorative paper on, that is what our little mushroom light post will look like. To cover the mushroom cap, I'm using this blue butterfly paper and what I've decided to do is do this in a kind of strips that will come up, they'll fold underneath and they'll come up to the top and then I'll put a circle up here on the top. And to get the size, so what I'm going to do is overlap them a little as I go around. And to get the size, what I've measured out is a uh, one inch by three and a half inch strip for each each piece, 16 of them, at one by three and a half. And then um, you could take this to your scoreboard. I just took the lead out of my pencil. And first I'm going to make a score at a half an inch. That's going to wrap around to the inside. And then the next score is going to be a sixteenth more than five eighths of an inch and I'll make that score and then I'll put my lead back on my pencil and from that second score uh, you can either use your mat or I have a two inch wide ruler I'm going to make a line that's uh, two inches from that second score I made and then to create this shape what I'm going to do is mark in from each side one quarter of an inch so that I have the, this piece in the center is one half inch wide. And then I can just come and if you can't see where that score mark is, and I'm, I'm working, I think you can see on the, the uh, reverse side of the paper, the back side of the paper, I'm just lining up my craft knife with 
um, the second score and then this tick mark that we made at the quarter inch and then we'll come over here and do the same thing on this side so that these wedges came from the second score that we made so the the it's straight uh, stays one one inch wide up through that second score and then the two wedges come off and then I'm going to overlap them you only need to ink one edge whichever edge is going to show when you overlap and then I'm just going to run some quarter inch score tape right here in front of me on each of these edges and just bend it a little when you get to that part that starts curving and then I just peel that back a little bit so that I can take a second piece up this other side just kind of using my fingernail to help get it in the right place there And then I'm just going to, for added insurance, put another little piece right here in the center. So now I've got all my little wedges, and I'm just going to start um, by folding on the two score lines. and then lining up the left edge with the with one of the um, cuts here now for this first one I'm not going to glue down the left side because I'll, I'm going to want to slip the last one underneath there so I'm just going to remove the tape backing from the center and then get that lined up there going all the way up it may not line up perfectly each time but it'll be good enough and then you just kind of can encourage it to come around these curves and down here I would leave this first one can stay I would say we'll leave all these tabs here until the end so then for the second one we should be able to remove all of the score tape backing and then you can kind of see the indentation here for the bottom where it will line up and I should have done my pre-folds here first but I can do them now and so I'm just going to come right there and line up that three-quarter inch and then up here at the top if you come over skip one of the intersections and line up with the with the second intersection that should give that a pretty good pretty good way to form around there We'll just bring that around. And we'll just continue on doing that going all the way around. Now I'm ready to put the last one on. And I'll just kind of sneak it underneath this first one. a little persnickety but it'll go I'm 
There we go. And then we'll remove this score tape from the first one. And then that one can come down. And just kind of burnish around here. Then I'm going to bend all these tabs to the inside. take my bone folder to get that to be a nice edge. And then get them stuck. Wrap them completely around. And of course we'll burnish that edge some more. Then up here on the top, I just pick one and then work my way around from that so that we can get this top to be fairly flat up here. Give that a good burnish. And then we can just cover this with a circle of the paper. Probably about an inch and a quarter is what I'm guessing because that's the size of that um, a chipboard piece that's underneath there. So I'll do that. So I punched out an inch and a quarter circle which will be just the right size I think to go up here on the top of the mushroom cap. But before I put that on I've just cut a small piece of lightweight chipboard just to, I'm going to glue that in and fill in this this kind of uh, hole here so that when this um, disc goes on it won't push down in there too far. So I'm just a little put a little glue on there and put that little disc in. And then I put some score tape backing on the paper before I punched out this disc. Look at that burnish around the edges. So that is how I finished my mushroom cap and I'll burnish these down a little bit more. But you could uh, put petals on, circles, whatever, however you'd want to finish, finish the mushroom cap. So I've chosen this paper to cover my stem with and I cut it a little bit short. I would suggest five, six inches tall by five inches wide. It's barely big enough at four and three quarters. So you should cut yours six inches tall by five inches wide. And then I'm just going to put some temporary adhesive on here and then mark where my holes will go so that I can punch them with my big bite before I put the paper on. So 
I will do that. So I punched my holes and made my little slot and added some um, extra score tape on there and then it's just a matter of peeling these back. and then wrapping it around the tube. See if I have my holes lined up right and then we'll just burnish this edge down. You of course can go around the whole thing and burnish it a little bit better. But that is what the mushroom light post will look like with paper on it.